Hypothetical one. Hypothetical two. Same old man, 70 years old, at the end, retired, thinking back over his life, and he, he muses to himself, if, if there was one big regret, one thing I could do differently, here's how he would express it. Hypothetical two, I just wish I had spent more time with my wife and my kids and my friends and my neighbors and my colleagues instead of being so blooming consumed with my work and accumulating a fortune. Ladies and gentlemen, hypothetical one, hypothetical two, which one's reality? Of course, it's number two. Nobody's coming to the end of his life. Ah, I should have worked more. <laughs> Nobody. You know why? Because what matters most to us in life, we were just talking about this our last time together, what matters most to us in life? Relationships. And rest could be the perfect entree for us to reconnect with what is most significant for any human being to reconnect with relationships. As you noted in our last time together, that ancient book, the Bible, says a whole lot about relationships. In fact, I would like to suggest to you that when we read these words about God resting as we did just a moment ago, it really is not simply descriptive about God resting. There is an inherent in it an invitation for humanity to rest as well. In fact, that's exactly what happens in what are called the Ten Commandments. Let's put Moses. How do we get a picture of Moses? I don't know how we did that, but we did. And there he is with the Ten Commandments. Now, at the moment I say Ten Commandments, I know what you're saying. Oh, please, I know the story. I saw the movie. Thunder and lightning and anger and earthquake and fire. And then thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Oh, don't go to that, please. Well, I'm going to go to it. Because, uh, come on, let's be honest. Uh, aren't you kind of glad that there, that there is the fifth commandment that says, honor your father and mother? Aren't you kind of glad that the human race thinks that's a good idea? Aren't you kind of glad that there's a sixth commandment that says, whoa, don't murder your neighbor, no matter how you feel? Aren't you glad there's a seventh commandment? Don't commit adultery. How about number eight? Don't steal. How about number nine? Don't lie. How about number ten? Don't want what's not yours. Is there anybody here who thinks we'd be worse off if we had to live by these? No, no, no. We all believe. Of course, it's just, it's just part of life. It's relationships. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, do you know the Ten Commandments? I know. Forget the thunder and lightning for a moment. The Ten Commandments, when you reduce them to their core, are designed to protect every single relationship that matters to you and me as human beings. Every single one is protected by the Ten Commandments. They're not bad news. They're very good news. And by the way, in the Ten Commandments, there's commandment number four. Can I share number four with you? I'll put it on the screen. This is commandment number four. I'm going to read the entire commandment to you. Number four goes like this. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And by the way, number four comes before all the ones I just mentioned that are protecting human relationships. So it's kind of foundational to getting on with each other. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter. Here come the relationships. Nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. Why? For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. End quote. Now look, I understand. There's a lot of controversial theology and science that could be, and, and even philosophy, embedded in these texts. And we could, I suppose, fruitfully have a wonderful day together debating that. I'm not interested in that. I simply want to remind you that the fourth commandment introduces what, in fact, is primal 
and foundational to the human race, and that is you got to have rest. If you want to succeed on the relational front, you have to have rest. You won't make it. You won't make it without rest. See? Remember to have rest. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you think about it. That's right along with don't murder and don't steal. It says, please rest. It must be important. Don't you suppose? Yeah, it must be. It must be. Maybe we're commanded to rest. Because we need that time to grow and enhance, to strengthen our relationships. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Could it be that if we took more time to rest, there would be less killing, less stealing, less lying? If I took time to rest so that I could concentrate on a relationship with you, why would I want to cross the fence and, you know, five-finger discount, take that out of the store or out of your yard? Why would I? Because I respect you. If I took more time to rest, relationships, wouldn't they mean more? And then the rest of the commandments, maybe they would all kind of just fall in place. You think about it. Relationships need time together. You've got to have time, time, time. I lost my dad less than two years ago. Seventy-five is too young to die. I miss my dad terribly. Oh, if I just had some more time and we could talk, Dad, and I need some, I need some, I need some counsel. My boy moved out of the house. He's 24 now. I miss him. I wish I had more time now to talk and just connect with Kirk. In fact, I don't have, I don't have this in my notes, but um, there was a song once. I'm sorry, I don't know who sang it, but Cat in the Cradle. In the, hmm, 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 hmm. You ever heard that one? Yeah, who sang that? You know? It's a story about a boy who grows up saying, Daddy, I don't want to play. Daddy, I don't want to play. And Daddy says, hey, listen, I'll get home from work one of these days. I'll come home. We'll have a great time then. We'll be fine then. Or something that ends with the word then, doesn't it? And it goes all the way through the boy's teenage years. And then he becomes a young man. And the father retires. And he says, son, let's get together now. Let's play now. And the son repeats the identical words he's grown up. You remember that song? Cat in the, cats in the cradle. That song. It's life. You've got to have time for relationships, time so that what is most important in this life, you can grow and strengthen. That's why we need rest. This ritualized day of rest, you know what? The New York Times may not be that far from the mark. A ritualized day of rest. You know, maybe, maybe what it is is, let me put this on the screen. God demands that you not allow your work to interface with the quality time that you need in order to build and strengthen your relationships. That's pretty radical. Maybe that's what the fourth commandment is all about. You think about it, ladies and gentlemen. God has made certain that one-seventh of your time be devoted. One-seventh of your time be devoted to relationships. Rest. One-seventh of your time. Rest. Focus. On relationships. Let me sum up in closing by re reiterating these three priceless gifts. I call them the three R's of rest. The gift of rest, number one, is a rest that allows me to reflect. Who am I? Why am I here? I need that rest. I also need a rest that allows me to release. I don't want to be a slave to my possessions. I'd rather be master than slave. Rest and reflect. Rest and release. And finally, as we've just been saying, rest and relationship. What matters most in life to me? A time away, some rest so that I can draw in to these relationships that are in the end what life will be about when it's all over. The three R's of rest. Rest and reflect. Rest and release, rest, and relate. All of it wrapped up in a gift of time that the ancient Bible calls the Sabbath. Could it be that it is a gift from someone who has always known that you need 
that time. A gift of time for the rest of your life. For the life of me. I can't figure out why you wouldn't take that gift.